So I think it'd be fair to say we didn't just write this report this morning. This is something we were working on for a while. Um, Roku has been uh, expanding beyond the U.S., announced they're moving into the U.K. There were press reports potentially about hiring people in Brazil, and we decided to give our, our clients some analysis to understand what that might be worth. And as a result, we moved our price target from 120 to 155. In addition, you have numerous uh, streaming services coming as you've been reporting the streaming wars, and Roku will be a key beneficiary of that. What about the cost of content? Can Roku keep up? Roku doesn't pay for content. So, but as far as making sure that they're that they're playing in the right space, that you're that you're buying a Roku device or using those when you've got all of these other options. So Roku has a third of the U.S. market um, for smart TV, meaning you either have a Roku-enabled uh, TV, the primary brand is TCL, but they have 11 uh, TV uh, manufacturer partners, or you have one of their devices, their set-top boxes. So over the last uh, you know, seven, eight years, as a neutral player, they've been able to get a third of the U.S. market. Uh, they're growing about 40%. Um, Amazon is hot on their heels, but still smaller. And then kind of the rest of the market has gotten a lot slower, more fragmented. And so they've clearly shown they know how to do this. Um, they bring you all of the services that you pay for, Netflix, Hulu, et cetera. But as consumers cut the cord, they want free ad-supported services, and they support those. And so right now, you get a plethora of choices, very easy to use, and consumers like it. I was going to say, Jason, I mean, some of your colleagues on the street tried to defend the name in the middle of the day. One argument is that Amazon, Apple, Comcast serve the 50 percent wealthiest consumers in the country, leaves the bottom half, so to speak, for an audience that would, would have a Roku to watch ad-driven free content. How legit is that? So uh, a few points. Um, it's not the, they don't make just make money on the advertising and the content. So when you sign up for a subscription service, they get paid off of that. There is also sponsorship on the device, right? So even if you are consider yourself, uh, you know, a wealthier person, you're like, I have no time for commercials. There's still a way to make money off you if somebody's trying to sell you the next bundle you might subscribe for. Secondly, um, you're seeing again a broadening of TV support. So. You know, LG, I don't think people will consider LG like a, a low-end manufacturer of TVs, and they are a Roku partner. And if when you go into a store, that's one of the choices of televisions you've seen. Um, you know, as, as you know, the cost of, of flat panels and TVs has fallen dramatically. And while at one point, um, you know, there was a low-end television that was Roku-enabled, you can now get a Roku-enabled TV at, at, at very high quality levels. And so we think when consumers walk into a Best Buy, for most of them, and they're thinking about a connected TV, they're thinking about either a Roku or an Amazon Fire TV. Uh, yep, and still big gains for the year, we should point out, despite today's drubbing. Jason, thanks. Good to see you.